Hi everyone, it's time to look at how much of a hack coder I am. It's time to start looking at some code for the Neo 7 segment display. I've been working on a library for it. It's pretty messy right now and just a whole lot of test code. It needs a, a lot of work before I release it, but that's okay, I'm not in a particular hurry. But it's got some pretty cool functionality. Before we get started, I just wanted to go over what I'm using to test this with. So as you can see, I've got a Neo 7 segment set up. It's currently plugged into an Adafruit uh, M0 Feather. It's a pretty fancy one. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all sorts of other stuff, but I'm not using any of that. I'm just literally driving some Neo pixels from it. Before I get started, I'm just going to light it up. And there we go. It's currently showing the, the character 8, which obviously is just all the pixels lit up. And just to show that this is actually doing something, if I tell it to show the character 4, you'll see it'll actually show the character 4. There we go. So it is actually working. So let's just have a quick scan of this code. And then I'll show you some of the cool things that I've done so far. And then I will show you the progress of my library that I'm writing. It will actually be a library that you'll be able to download and add via the library manager at some point, <laughs> if I ever release the boards. Technically, I don't have to release the boards. You could build a, a Neo 7 segment display just using some Neo Pixel strips, and that'll work just as well if you want to. So this project is totally entwined with the Adafruit Neo Pixel library. I'm not even going to try to you know reinvent that. That's a, a fantastic library. It handles a lot of the stuff that we need, and so the only thing I'm really going to be doing is extending this with my own library. And all we need to do is initialize how many digits we've got. Right now we've only got the one board, so it's number of digits is one. The data pin we're using, in this case it's digital six pin. Number of pixels just works out that there's 28 on a board times number of digits. It's all passed into the pixels class for the setting up the Adafruit near pixel array. We've got a delay into all value. I'm not even sure if we're using that anywhere right now. A rainbow index, which is I'm using to cycle colors. Just code here for the AT Tiny 85. This was part of the NetPixel code. I've got a whole lot of stuff commented out, so I'll just introduce things as I go through just to show how it all works. We do a pixels begin. I'm setting the brightness to quite low, firstly, so you can see it on the camera, and secondly, because it just doesn't need to be super bright and it just draws way more power, more amps, the brighter you go. And these are super bright LEDs, so you just don't need them. As you can see up here, I'm including my Neo 7 segment dot H. So these are all defined in here. So we've got a display text color, which is literally just displaying a single character. I can tell it to display the letter A, and I can make it red. And there we go. Maybe it looks a little bit orange on the camera, but it's actually red. So I can do individual characters that way with a particular colour. But I wanted to do some fancy things. There's no point having a you know array of RGB colours and only be able to use one colour at a time. So I've set up some different uh, colour arrays inside the the library, which I'll show you shortly. But this one here for instance will show the character zero in a rainbow gradient as you can see there, so it's, it's got doing a gradient from top to bottom and back again, so that's kind of cool. There's obviously a limitation in what characters a Neo 7 segment or any type of 7 segment display can show. For instance, you can't do a, a W or an M, but you can obviously display enough characters to do some basic messaging. So what I've got here is just a, a method that's going to go through all the different characters that it can display, and there's quite a few of them. I've made sure I've added as many as possible, and if we go down to the show all possible characters method. All it's really doing is, in this case, doing a display text color like we were doing above, but it's grabbing the character from the array of all the characters that it can actually show. And I'm just getting it to do it. It's kind of like a pinky color and waiting half a second each time. So if I just run that here, you'll see that it'll cycle through. So that's all the characters. I'll show you them all in an array shortly. 
What I have done though is there are some characters that can be displayed as a lowercase and an uppercase. I've opted to just to use one. So that's just cycling with all the different colors, uh, sorry, all the different available characters. And then this one here is going to try to print Hello World. I do a, a two lower or two upper on everything, so it doesn't matter, you can, you can mix them. It'll still get the correct character. This is going to go through the string. At the moment, it'll only display on the one board, but technically, once I finish the library, if there's four boards in a row, it'll display four characters at a time. So you'll notice that when it goes to print the W, there just won't be one. So as you would have seen there, the R was a lowercase r. I'm using a lowercase o instead of a zero, just so you can distinguish between them. But then the the L's were capital, the E's were capital. I think the H was a lowercase. I oh, know it was an uppercase. You can see how super prepared I am for this. So an up, uh, an uppercase D is just going to look like an O. So we did a lowercase D. So I've tried to use the best character, no W. So people aren't necessarily going to understand what that is. So that's all great for displaying a single character in a single set of colors, but what about animating? Well, th there's no real way to get around using a loop, but I've got a couple of different things that I'm playing with right now. So the first one is just displaying a, a single character. In this case, I'm just going to use a eight, and it goes through and actually cycles like a rainbow. So you can see it's cycling there through all the different colors. And this could be any character or any array of characters. So if I make it a, an S, you see it'll cycle through those. And uh, technically you could make each character on, or each board display a different cycling set of colors or they could cycle across. So another thing I'm working on, I haven't got it fully working yet, is doing a rainbow but per segment. I've got something wrong with my maths somewhere, I think, or something wrong with my array, but I've got a, a method called display text segment rainbow. And it's going to do the eight. And it's supposed to be cycling through the rainbow colors per segment, but there's something, something going on. I'm not quite sure what it is, so I'll keep working on that. Again, it's a bit hard to see the vibrancy of the colors through the camera. They're, um, when I'm looking directly at the, the colors, they're super bright, super vivid. But you can see it's definitely going. It looks like it's actually displaying different characters. It's not. It's just, for some reason, passing no color to some segments sometimes. So I need to keep working on that and work out what that is. Oops. Don't know about on Windows, but on the Mac, if you try to double-click in the editor to grab some text, it... Sometimes grabs it all, sometimes just grabs a section, as you can see there, which is frustrating. So I, I double click on it to change it, and then I type, and it's only changed some of the text. Okay, so let's have a look at the library code. I might just put. Uh, let's stick this back for now. And put the 8 back, just going to sit cycling colors nicely. Okay, so this is my library I've been writing. I'm just going to drag it up in here so I can show you. Here's the .h file, so these are all the different methods that I've exposed so far. And here's the .cpp, which is all the code. So I'm just going to do a quick scan of this right now. Uh, I might do a, another video down the line when this is all completely finished. Like right now, it's just a whole lot of methods, but it's not set up as a class, so you don't initialize it like a class like you do with the, the NeoPixels. I'm going to change that over and make it class-based. I'll be able to make it a lot nicer. But you've got stuff, for instance, like the you know these are the segments of the NeoPixels. So segment one is is pixel zero, one, two, and three, and segment two is four, five, six, seven. So these are all set up in an array. I've got a list of the actual XY coordinates of each pixel, of where they actually sit on the board. Um, that way I can do things like a, the vertical gradient, or I could do a horizontal gradient per board, or you know, it could be wiped across four boards in a row. The segment rainbow, which is where I've set up all the different indexes for each of, of the, the colors for the different segments. 
and here is the list of all the characters that can be displayed. So there's 31 of them, so we've got 0 up to 9, A to F, which is your normal hex values, and then obviously a G, an H, an I, J, L, N, O, P, Q, R, S, U, X, and Y. And obviously all in a space. And obviously some of these don't look great, like a, an X just looks like an H, because that's the only way to really display it. So that the idea is that in the context of the word, you'd understand what the letter was. You wouldn't mistake it as being an H if you were, you know, writing the word fox. Hopefully, <laughs> you'd understand that it was an X and not an H. And there was just some helper methods that, you know, will return the array size, can grab a character at a particular index, and then here's all the code to do the things like the segment rainbow, display text vertical rainbow, so basically all I'm doing in these is I'm going through using a mask to determine which bits should be on and off for a particular segment. Right now I've got a check in here that's checking that the segment number is less than 7. And the reason I've got that is normally a 7 segment display has the 7th segment, or the 8th segment, because it's 0 to 7, the 8th segment is the decimal point. But I opted not to put the decimal point on these boards when I originally designed them. and um, not sure if I'm regretting that decision. Uh, I think they become a little less useful for people who want to be able to display some data and they need a decimal point or a period. So I might actually redesign the boards or make a, a new revision that actually has a decimal point. So that's what the, the last segment normally is. And if I don't trap for this last thing, it actually tries to display data on that segment and there isn't one. Because there are obviously eight bits in a byte and there are eight segments. So I, I could just change the for loop to not include that particular segment in the mask, but I want to keep it there because if I do actually add a, an extra near pixel on the bottom right to be used as a period, then I, all I have to do in this case is remove this code or wrap it around a define that says has period or not when you initialize the board and the code. So it's pretty basic, it just goes through and then it works out if it's supposed to be turning them on or not, and then if it is, it goes and sets the color based on a wheel special method that I've got down below, which allows me to pass in the pixels and wheel position, kind of like this, the similar thing to what the wheel method does, just in the normal NeoPixel library, but in this case I can actually pass it the class for the pixels. So that's basically it. There's really a, not a lot to any of this. There's a find index of character, so I can pass it a character in a string and it'll go through and actually give me the index back from the array, find byte for the character, just a whole lot of helper stuff. So it's not super complex, there's a lot of repetitious code in here right now and that's fine because I'm, I'm really still trying to work out what I want to do with the library and, and, and what functionality I want to give people straight off the bat to work with and what functionality I would assume you'd build yourself based on my helper libraries or helper methods. So that's basically it, but as you can see it's definitely working. I'm just going to uh, close these. For some reason, this won't compile if I leave them open. So that's it. So we have a, a working board. We have a, a start of a basic library that allows you to display from a range of 31 different numbers or characters on a board. The next step is going to be for me to put four boards together, finish off the library, or at least clean up the library a little bit. And then my plan is to actually make a YouTube subscriber counter out of these using a Wemos D1 Mini. It'll go off to the internet, grab my data, and display it on a board. And then the next exciting, exciting step for that is going to be, once I've got my laser cutter fully set up and working, is to actually cut some acrylic for the back and front and actually make a really nice acrylic-based polished display of a, a four-digit near seven-segment YouTube counter. And why am I only doing four? Well, let's face it, folks, it's going to take me a long time to crack the 9,999 mark. So I think a subscriber counter with four digits will last me a long time. Okay, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please post in the comment section. I'll be quite happy to answer. If you'd like to share and like, that'd be awesome. If you want to thumbs down, feel free to do that as well. But please leave some constructive comments that I can, so I can understand why you're thumbing down. This is kind of a new thing for me, sharing code. And I've been coding for a long time, but I generally don't let people see my code. I'm a bit of a, a hack sometimes, or a bit lazy, but it's exciting to be able to actually write some code and share it and build my first library and give something back to the community. Okay, until next time, bye.